Alright everybody, hello and welcome back to another episode on Scrap Mechanic with me, Post Commentary Spacefish. I've not had one of these mistakes for quite a while, uh, but unfortunately it has come again where, well, we don't have any microphone audio of what I was saying during the recording this time around just due to OBS not registering that the microphone was even there and, uh, well, me not seeing that there was no audio registered, unfortunately. So um, we are missing audio for all this clip now, but of course we have done a fair few things in this video. So I do certainly want to share it with you and I'm going to try now to go into post commentary and pick up on the things that happened in this video as good as possible. So, um, very sorry for that issue. I hope you're all not too mad at me. But with that said, let's get right into it. Just quickly though, before we get started, if you're new around here, if you happen to enjoy this episode, despite me messing up on this one, please make sure to hit that subscribe button right down below. That would mean the absolute world to me. We're trying to hit 1k subs by the end of the year. There's only about three months left in terms of time to actually hit that milestone and a whole lot of people to go. So if you want to be one of those people that really, really helped me out with that one, please make sure to do so. And thank you very much for that. But with that said then, uh, the last episode we really mostly worked on the vehicle. We uh, finished shaping the vehicle out on the sides and we did get the front construct about going with the saw blades and with scheming out where the collectors go, where we want the cages to be. And uh, well today what we are really aiming to do is further construct the whole part on, uh, up front of the vehicle with the metal mesh and uh, ideally also already look at some of the logic behind uh, well clawing around trees if that makes any sense to kind of hold the tree in the well in the arms so to say of the logging vehicle so we can just grind it down from the bottom to the top while it basically falls through so uh, that's basically what we're starting with I did take some time, of course, in between episodes to get some things ready. You can see we've got a good bunch of metal mesh already there. We've got some, uh, we've got some bearings, and we've got some other parts ready to go as well, so that we can get right started. And uh, well, one thing that I do actually notice right here is that we do technically also need to close off this side of the vehicle because, of course, technically the tree could just fall the other way and fall right on top of the driver, which I suppose is not really something that we want to have happen to us. So uh, we get right to that part, actually making sure that is somewhat closed off. And you can already see that we are running out of metal mesh very quickly. I really didn't quite have a clue how much we used in terms of metal mesh the first time and how much I would need to make for this episode. So that's why we're a bit short, but I did make sure that we do have enough metal remaining so we can just fabricate stacks upon stacks upon on stacks and um, get this thing ready ish over the course of the video so we're just gonna have that continue in the background and now we will get to instead actually scheming out the actual construction I mean if you remember we did in the last uh, episode already extend this arm out sort of far enough around the actual tree so that we would have a bit of an indication where the whole mechanism would need to go because of course we do want to make sure that the arms are sort of far enough out so that we can really claw around any tree size and this one here being pretty big in general so I'm hoping that if we go with this size we should uh, with this size rather we should overall be quite fine the other thing that we're of course also looking at is the counterweight right here because you can see that even with the counterweight extended all the way to the back we are still front heavy so it is absolutely terrible that and I did think um, if I remember correctly that I heard a robot here somewhere running around not really finding it being like oh okay I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna take the contents of this chest instead and uh, then we just look around the vehicle and we look up and there is the Abot. I've got no clue where he came from there even watching this back I cannot tell where he was hiding I did evidently hear him um, but instead well he was there, we do get a component kit in return, so that's a good trade for the slight jump scare, I suppose, and I don't know, I'm just investigating where he came from, because I'm super, super confused at this point, thinking he may have come from up there, but who really 
knows at this point. I wouldn't even be able to tell you after the fact re-watching this now. But yeah, so we're looking at the overall weight uh, situation on this thing a bit, and of course, I mean, we do need an engine right there too, which I haven't actually made just yet, because we were very, very, very low on component kits. The plan for this episode was to go to a POI, actually, and grab some component kits, so we could do the engine, could do some upgrades, of course, for the pistons, of also on the watering system, which I um, had destroyed a third time in the row, of course. Um, but uh, we did not get to do that in the very end, so just a little spoiler right there already. Um, that is totally fine though, because we did most certainly have more than enough left to do. Now over here we're really sort of measuring out how long this arm needs to be. Uh, it turns out it was uh, one block short, so we just quickly added that on. And we're of course also adding on the second bearing already, because this is where we want to, in the end, get the mechanism going that I had already planned for. And um, that way we do already have a bit of an idea of how this is all going to work out for us from a design standpoint. Now we're of course a bit short on metal mesh here and I'm really contemplating, and now as you can see already taking away some metal mesh, um, because initially I was like thinking about it, I think we were thinking about it in the last episode, um, using this sort of tooth system. Uh, to intermangle the individual blocks that I've got going on in my truck build for reference. So if you want to uh, check back to that episode if you haven't seen it yet, um, you will understand what I mean. Um, just to make sure that these blocks don't glitch into each other when I open and close the arms. Because of course if I have uh, block next to block and then the block next to one block just turns, things would start glitching into each other. So I'm quite worried about that. And I just figured out that I'm really not going to use this tooth system of that truck over there, which by the way is still not complete and still going to take a lot of time. But just not really the top priority currently. Um, but instead of this tooth system, we just took away one row. And uh, I think that's quite fine, we've got some space to turn around things like that, and, well, I mean, the trees are going to be so big they're not going to glitch through that small little gap in between those anyway, so I don't really think we need the tooth system. We did have it going, of course, on the um, truck, because we didn't want the vehicles that drive up there to get stuck in between the gaps, but for this stuff... I think that is totally fine. Now, we of course need even more mesh, and we go and make even more mesh, and I can already tell you that we will need even more mesh than this, but we are getting started, and we're also grabbing the controller that I had made in between episode uh, episodes from the chest, just to actually be able to get some of the logic going. I had forgotten that up there, so we do now have that. And we will actually take care of the logic then in a quick minute. And honestly, it turned out to be a good bit easier than I really thought. And a, well, well, I mean, a good bit faster than I really thought. I mean, in the end, contemplating these things again, it's really not the hardest thing in the world to get that sort of logic going. But I had somehow just expected that to take a bit longer. Now, we're extending these arms up front, of course, that we are intending to use to claw around the trees when we do harvest one or when we knock one down later on. And uh, I had already measured that the prior time. We uh, needed 14 blocks, I think it was, so seven on each side. And we are really now just contemplating also how we're doing the arm length thing, because, well, quite evidently, if we do close those up and they uh, intermangle themselves, there's quite a lot of a chance of glitching, so we will probably get back to that in just one second. Now, for the controller, we're just going to place that right down there. I thought that was quite a nice placement, you know, very nice and accessible if you just extend the weight out, but if you pull it back in, if you're driving around, it's very, very nicely but, uh, protected between like the safety cell that I've got going there for the gas tank and for the engines and a huge pile of scrap stone blocks. So I think quite a good placement, very nicely hidden away while at the same time being nicely accessible. We don't have to have any on top mechanics going on for that. Now we're of course going to upgrade this thing because we are looking to get two bearings going with it of course. So we're going to need two uh, connections able to be set up and then we're just going to quickly get the logic going between these. Very nice and simple, honestly, not really all that much to speak about. We do end up taking off one block right there so we don't have the glitching thing going on that I was explaining just a second ago, so we will have a slight gap there. 
And um, I am also, I think, a bit worried that um, if a tree is very heavy, he may, well, it may somehow be able to press open the bearings there, or that, that may pose some sort of weak point to the construct. Uh, if you know anything about that, please let me know down below if we need to, like, upgrade the controller or something to make sure the bearings are a bit stronger in terms of their turning force, because, of course, um, well, we have the slow fast lever there I, I suppose that would also have a bit of an effect on the torque forces the bearings can put out um, but yeah just let me know about that if you have any input now we've put down a switch of course in front and that is meant to control the controller and we're setting up the bearings you can see one of these arms nicely turning in just as it was supposed to got a plus 90 degree change going I think and it's perfectly clawed around the tree super super happy with that one and uh, now we're just going to set up the other bearing which we're going to make minus 90 degrees so it turns the right direction and now the vehicle is nicely clawed around the tree easy as that honestly I don't know why I was expecting the logic setup to take me any longer than this, but it was very nice and simple. It worked out very nicely, and we're pretty much all done with the logic at that part. So that's that. That's the vehicle nicely clawed around the tree. And now I'm saying something else. I've got absolutely no clue what we are talking about. But uh, of course, I mean, there's a lot of other things still to take care of on this vehicle. I mean, technically, sure, we could knock down a tree like this practically would totally fall out. Uh, on the one hand side, we're of course going to pull up the cage further. And we're going to have to see, honestly, how far up the cage needs to be in comparison to the tree. Because of course, if you look up there, that tree is darn long. So... I have got absolutely no clue how high the cage needs to be so that the tree doesn't somehow fall out of it. If anyone has an idea, of course, as usual, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. I would absolutely appreciate that. And uh, we're contemplating right now a bit the cage placement, I think. I was considering if I was going to put something on top of that edge, not, you know, if there would be any, well, constructional benefit in terms of the strength of the overall construct, uh, but I think technically there wouldn't be, and honestly, if some bot comes running at us, getting rid of exactly that block that is sitting on the bearing, the arms are 100% going to be off the vehicle anyways, so... Honestly, that's not going to matter. Then, on the other hand side, that thing's sitting on an edge, so it's not really going to make it any easier for the lock to fall out of the arms. So, well, in the end, I think we just decided to not put any blocks there and only move on from when, uh, well, after that, and just leave the course open, save a bit of material, save a tad bit of weight also, crucially, because this thing is now really, really, really starting to, well, not topple over, but to very much lean forwards, it was already quite bad before, and uh, it is now getting worse, of course, while the mesh is somewhat lightweight, honestly, comparable to some of the other stuff we got on the vehicle, it is still quite heavy, considering the amount of blocks we have to throw at the thing, and as you can see, making more mesh told you all before. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that is most certainly still a bit of work to be done there also on the weight, and we will get to that in a second. As I said previously, I was kind of planning to do some POI stuff with you all in this episode too, for a little bit of a change, but it turned out to very much just be an entire episode of me building vehicles and, uh, well, enjoying life doing so. So uh, we're just quickly slapping on the bits and bobs of mesh that we got here, using up all the materials real quick. And, uh, well, after that, we are going to go and pick up some scrap stone in order to work away at the weights of it. Trying to balance the whole thing out, because, well, I mean, we are most certainly also going to upgrade those springs in the future up front to try and make the vehicle even a bit more balanced and give uh, even a, a bit more rigidity to the overall construct. But um, I think the whole, well, even the whole front assembly is already going to be very, very, very heavy, as you can evidently see. And then the second we get a tree in there that tries to fall over in our face and is like 20 bajillion meters high and mega, mega heavy, like we are not going to be able to compensate that on springs with a small, tiny weight on its own. So we're really, really, really widening the overall weight right here. Um, 
putting on as much scrap stone as we can, basically. I mean, we do have a lot of that at this point from all the mining that we had previously done. Uh, these days, honestly, also not doing that too much anymore, to be fair, just due to the sheer amount of haybots that I kill when defending the farm, already supplying me enough metal. But that's beside the point. Um... We, we really still have, I mean, the, the chests are still nearly entirely full and we don't even closely have enough chemicals to make all of that any concrete. So um, we're just slapping on all we can. Did slap on a bit too much there, I think. Uh, I, I, I'm quite sure I already said this during the video when recording. I am still trying to keep some sort of design while doing this. I mean, sure thing, we are trying to slap on as much scrap stone as we can just to increase that weight because we really need every single bit of it. But I'm still trying to somewhat make the design flow and surely while it is chunky i'm trying to somewhat integrate this whole block into the overall vehicle design a bit as well you can see also that i'm trying to make this design flow a bit more here uh extending all of the wooden blocks out a bit you know so that the the stone well the mega huge stone doesn't stand out too crazily if that makes any sense now, with this all kind of sort of set up, we're also extending this out one block further because I'm really just trying to leverage every single inch that I still have on this vehicle. And honestly, I think that may even look a tad bit better than the previous approach. I don't know. But, um, well, I hope. Well, you will see. And this has really helped balance the vehicle out a bit. We're still a tad bit front heavy. I am really hoping that we can rectify that in the future with a little bit of a spring upgrade so that that is a bit more balanced from factory. But overall, it is really, really a lot better. We're really quickly also connecting the switch up, you know, so we can open and close this up. Uh, but in general, that does look a lot better than before I would say. The question is also I guess how long that is going to stay that way because of course in terms of that tower we are really with that little extension right there uh, we're really going to extend that up a lot further so the weight will increase even more. I hope that we can still somehow keep that balance with a bit of a spring upgrade. You can see though just how massive this weight now is. It is literally pulling the entire vehicle back and I'm quite confident if we were not clawed onto the tree there we would absolutely be thrown like two meters back just extending that out but we're also quickly looking at the bearing there because that is of course hopefully another option to increase the leverage of the weight in the future because uh well quite evidently the further we extend out the uh, piston itself the further w the weight goes to the back the more effect it will have on the overall weight balance of our vehicle bringing the weight balance even further back when we extend it out and well, the trees, as I previously said, are going to be quite tall and massive and heavy, so the more we can balance for those massive trees, the better. So I'm quite confident that once we do have more component kits, we're going to upgrade our bearing to the max as well, so we can extend that weight even further to the back, and uh, then we will see about that, hopefully... With that, the big weight, the high extendability, and a bit more balance to this, uh, through the springs, we can make things work. I'm still a bit worried, not gonna lie. Um, and I think, you know, those worries may very well also be quite well founded. Um, we will find out, I suppose, at the latest, when we try and uh, knock over a tree and it pulls... Uh, the entire vehicle with it and we fly through the air and have a lot of fun not really but we'll see i suppose regardless we've got another stack now off the metal mesh and we're extending things further upwards plunking all the materials in there that we can really and um taking care of the vehicle as good as possible but yeah so other than that doing a quick test right here i think just to see how drivable this thing also remains i mean on the one hand side of course quickly looking at things with the extended stuff but yeah here uh checking out of course the potential to upgrade the suspension further up front we already have level four so it's not going to go much further but we can make it a 
bit stiffer still. So we're definitely going to do that once we have the component kits. It is going to be a lot that we need. So hopefully I'm going to manage to farm all of those that we want in between episodes. But, um, well, fingers crossed that I will be. Um, wish me luck, I guess, that the POIs are going to be good. Because I think we're going to need 16 alone for the springs. We're going to need to make a new engine, of course, still for the saw blades, which... Well, for one, we need component kits to even make it, then we need component kits to upgrade that, so that's going to be a lot of an effort. Uh, then we are going to need component kits for the bear, uh, no, not for the bearing, for the piston on this car, and we will need component kits for the pistons on the farm, because I do need to get that back up and running. Still haven't really farmed much in between episodes, so that is going to be an entire huge effort too. But yeah, I think with that said then, we are about calling it at this point. I'll have to go and farm all those component kits now in between episodes. I'll try my very best there to get those going for us. You can see, just doing the last few driving tests and it is still driving quite alright. Quite happy with that overall. We're clawing that to the tree, just in case I accidentally extend the weight and, you know, <laughs> the whole thing gets thrown back. But anyways, regardless, what I wanted to say is, um, that is about it for all the vehicle building for the day. We'll need the component kits now to continue. We'll definitely need the engine so that we can get those blades going. We'll definitely need a lot more mesh so we can extend that tower outwards. And then, of course, we do want to upgrade the bearing and the spring. So a lot of farming to be done in between episodes. I'll take care of that. And then hopefully next time we will have even more fun stuff to plunk at the vehicle. And within a few episodes it should hopefully be done and we'll be knocking down the first tree or the first tree will be knocking down us let's see how that one is going to go but with that said then i hope you all very much enjoyed this episode of course if you did please make sure to hit that like button down below that does always help out the channel a ton and if you're new around here and haven't done so just yet also please consider subscribing right down below and as well as hitting that bell icon in order to stay up to date on all the future upcoming episodes with me just quickly um Dying of thirst in the background. Make sure to stay hydrated, everyone. <laughs> and, um, well, with that all said and out of the way, as usual, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I will catch you in the next episode very, very soon. Ciao.